Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. So today we are going to learn something about the important tools which you are going to use in nanotechnology. As you know that nanotechnology is not something which you can actually see with the help of your eyes. It is not, not also something which you can see with an ordinary microscope which you have come across during your 11th and 12th standard. But rather it requires much more sophisticated techniques in order to see the material on a nano scale. And what are these instruments for seeing this surface on the nano scale? We basically have two types of instruments. One are the electron microscopes and the second category are nothing but the surface analysis technique or the STM or the AFM. STM stands for the scanning tunneling microscope whereas AFM starts for the atomic force microscope. Out of this the first thing which you are going to focus is nothing but the electron microscope. Now basically there are two types of electron microscopes. One is, is called as the transmission electron microscope and the second is called as the scanning electron microscope. As the name indicates, in the first instance, transmission electron microscopes actually transmits, whereas in the scanning electron microscopes, the, it does not transmit the signal, but rather it reflects the signal and it is a reflected signal which we, which we receive. Now let us take one thing at a time. First of all, let us understand why is it that scanning electron microscope or a tunneling electron microscope has a better resolving power or so as to say a better seeing power as compared to an optical microscope or for example even my eye. And the reason will be clear in a short while from now. But first of all, as you see in this slide, that the electron microscopes can see right up till the range from let us say a few microns to around 0.1 angstrom. So this means we can go right up till the nano range in order to study the nanomaterials. Now the main point is this, let us coming, coming back to the original question as to why is it that the resolving power of a electron microscope is more than that of the eye as well as that of an optical microscope and the reason is very clear. First of all an optical microscope as the name suggests uses or even our eye for example we can see that you know that if at all I want to read something I will you know I will, I will rather rather I will bring it close and I will like to see something at a very close distance in order to resolve certain things. And what is the signal that is getting reflected out over here? The signal is nothing but that of light. So even as I'm speaking to you, the signal that is coming on my face is that of light, which is an electromagnetic wave. And it is that signal which you actually receive. And hence you are able to see me. In the same way, in the case of electron microscopes, what you have is nothing but electrons at the signal. That's interesting, right? So we have nothing but electrons as the signal. Now what is the advantage of this? The advantage of using electrons as the signal is you can actually play or rather actually you can tune the wavelength of the electrons. Now you might say over here that electrons are nothing but matter waves whereas a light is nothing but an electromagnetic wave. It's not a matter, it's not a matter wave. It's, a, it's basically made out of photon. So this is something which does not sink within me, right? So at one end, you're speaking of the wavelength of electrons and at the other end, you're actually speaking about the wavelength of the electromagnetic waves. So that's something which is not sinking. But De Broglie has already worked upon this principle wherein he states that a particle can also behave like a wave, an electron is a particle. Similarly, an electromagnetic wave can also behave like a particle. So, 
in the case of electrons let us say if their energy is let us say some e right so we can actually correlate this energy with the wavelength of the electron and it is this wavelength which we call as de broglie wavelength now this de broglie wavelength is made less for electrons and that's the reason why you can actually see or rather you can resolve the nanoparticles using not an optical microscope but rather using a electron microscope okay thanks for watching this video dear students please do subscribe to our channel ekida